1687, Isaac Newton published his now famous Three Laws of Motion, and in doing so, more or less founded modern physics. Number one, free particles move with constant velocity. Number two, F equals ma. And number three, forces between particles come in equal but opposite pairs. The first law says that a football flying through empty outer space will travel in a straight line with constant speed. The second law is of course the most famous equation in physics, or maybe the second most famous next to E equals mc squared. But I want to focus on the third law here, which is often quoted as for every action there's an equal but opposite reaction. Disguised inside of this somewhat enigmatic statement is one of the deepest facts about the universe, the principle of conservation of momentum. In this video, I'm going to explain what Newton's third law means, and how it secretly encodes momentum conservation. In fact, at the end of the video, we'll see that the conservation of momentum is itself the deeper principle of the universe, whereas Newton's third law isn't even always true. So, let's say that we have two particles hanging out in otherwise empty space. What forces are acting on them? Well, again according to Newton, there'll be a gravitational force between them that goes like one over the distance squared that separates them. The gravitational force is attractive, so it pulls the left particle toward the right, and conversely, the right particle toward the left. But the magnitude of the force is the same in both cases, only the direction is reversed. That's what we mean by equal but opposite. Likewise, the particles might carry some electric charge, and then there'll be an electric force acting on each of them, according to Coulomb's law. As a matter of fact, Coulomb's law of static electricity is remarkably similar to Newton's law of gravity, again going like one over the distance squared between the particles. A key difference, though, is that the electric force is only attractive if one particle is positively charged and the other is negatively charged. If the charges have the same sign, then the force is repulsive. But either way, the forces have the same strength but point in opposite directions. This is the essence of Newton's third law. For any force we find acting on the left particle, Newton asserts there will be another force acting on the right particle, of the same magnitude but pointing in the opposite direction. Now what does this have to do with conservation of momentum? Well, remember that momentum is a mathematical way of quantifying how much motion an object has, and it's defined by multiplying the velocity of a particle by its mass. That way, we account for the fact that an 18-wheeler traveling down the street at 25 miles per hour should count for a much larger amount of motion than a bicyclist riding down the road at the same speed. Now notice that if we take the rate of change of the momentum, we get the mass of the particle times its acceleration. But we recognize that from Newton's second law, F equals ma. Therefore, the rate of change of a particle's momentum is equal to the total force that's acting on it. And we can treat the case with multiple particles similarly. We assign a momentum to each particle. P1 equals m1v1, and P2 equals m2v2. Then the force on particle 1 is the rate of change of its momentum, and likewise for particle 2. And if we add these together, we learn that the total force on the two particle system is equal to the rate of change of the total momentum. Now comes the key point. Because Newton's third law assures that the force on particle 1 is equal but opposite to particle 2, when we add them together to find the total force on the system, they cancel out and we get zero. Therefore, the rate of change of the total momentum vanishes, and so the total momentum is conserved. In this way, Newton's law of action and reaction is secretly all about momentum conservation. A system on which the total force vanishes is called isolated. And what we've therefore learned is that the momentum of an isolated system is a constant. For a planet orbiting a star, for example, we have an isolated system as long as there are no other masses nearby. Then the total momentum will be a constant, independent of time, because there's no net force on the system. Of course, if we're thinking about our own Earth and Sun, then there are other masses around, and they exert external forces on the Earth plus Sun system. Then the momentum of the Earth and Sun will no longer be constant. It's only internal forces that cancel in pairs when we add them all up. On the other hand, we can always enlarge our definition of our system to include these additional masses, and then the total momentum of the larger system will be conserved. We believe that conservation of momentum is a deep property of the universe. Newton's third law, on the other hand, isn't always true. The classic example where it fails is in electromagnetism. Say we have two positive charges moving toward each other at a right angle. 
one heading down the y-axis and the other heading to the left along the x-axis. Since the charges are the same sign, there will be a repulsive electric force between the two of them. That force isn't precisely given by Coulomb's law, since that's specific to stationary charges, whereas these are moving. But the electric forces are still going to be equal but opposite to each other. Because they're moving, each charge also creates a magnetic field that circles around it. And that exerts a magnetic force on the other particle. The particle on the x-axis experiences a magnetic force that points up, while the particle on the y-axis experiences a magnetic force to the right. They don't point in opposite directions, and Newton's third law is therefore violated. Does that mean that the physics of electricity and magnetism is inconsistent with the principle of momentum conservation? In fact, it does not. The reason is that the electric and magnetic fields themselves carry momentum. And it's only after accounting for the momentum of both the particles and the fields that we can consistently understand the flow of momentum in an electromagnetic system. If you're interested in learning more about all this, you can get the notes that I wrote up to go along with this video for free at the link in the description. If you're finding my videos helpful and would like to help support the channel, I recently set up a Patreon page that I'll also put a link to. If you're a student looking for help with your physics or math classes, I devote part of my time to tutoring on Zoom, and you can also find the link to make an appointment with me in the description. For more intro physics lessons, check out the physics help room playlist here on my channel. And if you're up for a challenge, I posted another video the other day explaining how momentum conservation is related to a symmetry principle, the fact that the laws of physics look the same in one corner of the universe as in another, by a beautiful and important relationship called Noether's Theorem. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.